Hello again, and welcome to Glenn's session number 14. I'm Ronnie Gibson, a scholar performer of Scots fiddle music based in Aberdeen, Scotland. Today, we're workshopping two sets, 107th and 111th pairs of tunes, which come from Glenn's second book, published 125 years ago. You can download the sheet music that you need to take part at glencollection125.wordpress.com. Right, let's see who we've got with us tonight. Margaret, hello. Leslie, good to have you. Francoise, hi. And Iona, great. Lovely to have you. Thanks for taking part. Let's start with set 107. F major is the key. The Strathspey. Mrs. Oswald of Ochenkruv's New Strathspey by Robert McIntosh and the real Lord John Campbell by Duncan McIntyre. Both um, splendid tunes, as you'll find out. Uh, Maura, hi, Maura. Uh, good to have you. Uh, and Leslie, you like this art? Yes. <laughs> uh, James was meant to start primary one uh, last week, but the school got flooded, so he's starting tomorrow, but he had some uh, a, a quite interminable but, um, video calls with his class. So I thought I'd better uh, put some some appropriate backdrop. Um, there you go. <laughs> it's very happy. It's how I feel. Um, so here we are. Let's uh, start with this. Strathspey, Mrs. Oswald of Ochenkruv's new Strathspey. This is the Strathspey that Macintosh chose to open his um, second collection of tunes. Right. Let's, um, in our usual way, start by giving it a read without any rhythm, so equal quavers, and without any ornaments. But do try and attend to the bowing that it's marked. Um, this sort of tempo. <laughs> Ready, two, three, and four. couple of barred second fingers and barred third fingers where you've got the same finger on two strings in succession. So if you look at the very beginning, the, the downbeat of bar one, A2, D2, um, and then at the end of bar two, we've got D3, A3. So just try and uh, plan ahead and have your finger in the right position so you're not having to lift it and place it on each string in succession. If it just goes down in the middle, it can roll. Um, the other thing about the pitch is the voicing in the in the last bar of the line, in line four. We've got that low C at the start of the second beat. -dum, -do -dum 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 -dum. This is a bit of punctuation from the bass. Um, so what you want to do is just put a little breath before the low C. Let's just try that. <laughs> Yarada, do so you can just give it that weight that it needs. Let's try bar four and then we'll try the whole thing again. Ready, three and four. And again. Once more. And if you can make it nice and rich, especially when it's on that on that low string. Right, from the top again. Equal quavers, no ornaments. Two, three, and four. There we go. 
that's the idea. Okay, let's add in some rhythm. Now, let's just give it a play and then we'll do some chatting with the rhythm, still with our ornaments. Three and four. <laughs> There are lots of um, scotch snaps where the uh, semiquaver is first in a pair. And um, the weight always needs to be on the short note on the semiquaver. Um, and the the dotted quaver, which comes on the up, is more recessive. Yada, yada. It's like a bouncing a ball. If you if you're being really aggressive and you go boing, you know boing da da da. It's a bit like that aggressive basketball. The other couple of things. There's a group of four semis in bar two. And just give them some shape. Ya da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Pull out the first one. And that'll be well. And the other rhythmic aspect uh, is in the fourth bar again. The first beat. Yalam di. Regardless of tempo, if, even if you're playing it very slowly, those semi quavers are, are more like um, ornaments. Very quick. Yalam di. And a tear, you know. The only other thing related to the rhythm is um, the upbeat to bar two. So we've got the upbeat to the tune. At the end of bar one, we've got another two semiquavers, and they're like an upbeat to the next bar. The bowing's different. They're slurred at the very start, and then at the end of our one, they're separate. But it's the same sort of lift that you need. Okay, once more. Still without ornamentation, but as printed otherwise. Ready, two, three, and four. <laughs> a lot in it. Um, I tell you what, since there's so much in it, let's just take a step back and slow things down. And then we'll add the ornamentation. Okay, still no ornamentation for now. One, two, three, and four. <laughs> There we go. Very nice. Very uh, elegant. F major. It's an intriguing key for Strut Space. Now, the ornamentation. We've got uh, just some in this first bar here. Interestingly. It's not the ornamentation that Macintosh marks in his um, original copy, but for whatever reason, Glenn omitted it. It's presumably an oversight because he so proudly boasts that the uh, original orthography is maintained. Um, but we have that G ornament at beat three, and then it's a third finger flick uh, at beat four. Have a listen, and then we'll try it. This is just from uh, the beginning. Okay, two, three, and four. Now, the trick with the G ornament on beat three is to put the weight on the ornament. 
and the fleck, as usual, is just a textural thing. Once more. Two, three, and four. And again, four. Once more, two, three, and four. Okay, I think we're ready to give the uh, first measure a wee play. Here we go with as printed. Two, three, and four. Thoughts or questions, please do fire them into the chat bar. It's always, uh, always great to, to hear from you. Let's take a look at the second measure in the meantime. Line two, let's play again without rhythm, without ornaments. So equal quavers. Two, three, and four. <laughs> Even without the rhythm, it's poetry. Right. Um, there's the occasional barred second finger. Um, for instance, line two, bar two. Um, the first two notes, second finger on the A, second finger on the D. Um, but otherwise, the notes are fairly straightforward. We're getting an interesting little um, pattern in line three, bar three, where we have that. Uh, high F, every other note. Well, let's just try that, still with equal quavers. So this is line three, bar three. Two, three, and four. Uh, apologies, a false start. And again, three and four. And again, and. Once more, and. Now, the key is to have a firm down and then just a, a recessive up. Have a listen. Let's try it once more and then we'll move on. Three and four. That's it. Very good. I see we have Donald with us. Uh, bad planning with your cycling. Oh, well, no, it's great to have you. <laughs> uh, and Iona's asking, does the accent always come on the start of the grace note? Usually, um, I, especially when it's just the single grace note. Um, but even when it's the double one, you want the edge there from the very start of the note. So if you take, for instance, the... Um, the two note grace note in bar one of the tune, line one bar one, um, on beat four of the bar, we've got that F G grace note. The note starts on the on the first grace note because it's a note of F. So always go into the the grace notes quite hard um, with a bit of accent. If it doesn't sound right, then there's maybe an exception, but. That's the rule of thumb. Okay, back to the second measure, line two. Let's add in some rhythm, but keep it nice and steady. Yum, bum, drum, dee dum. Two, line two, three, and four. <laughs> Uh, 
there we go. So again, lots of um, snaps. It's something that's become slightly incongruous in a strat space. Uh, like I think I said before, uh, when you find the later editions, these long lines of snaps tend to be sort of mellowed out somewhat. But um, if you persevere, they're worthwhile. And if you get the right accentuation, um, it usually falls into place. Um, so we've still got those groups of four semis in line two, bar two, and uh, below line three, bar two. Um, but otherwise, it's it's snap central, really. And just remember, you want the accent on the first of each pair. Um, right. It's worth also pointing out at the end of line two, we've got some equal quavers. And then in bar line three, bar four, more equal quavers, just for a bit of um, light relief, really. Um, let's just try it once more with the rhythm, but no ornaments. And then we'll look at the ornaments. Two, three, and four. <laughs> The ornaments are um, not extensive, but uh, let's just look at them bar at a time. In line two, bar one, we've got an overhanging G uh, on bar three, uh, beat three. So we're in line two, bar one, beat three. We've got that G ornament. And then the second ornament in the bar on beat four just makes that really a, a group of um, four semis. Let me give it a play. I'll play from the start of line two. Here we go. Uh, Some a bit of an inelegant ending for such an elegant recipe. Okay, let's give it a try. Two, this is line two, bar one, with the upbeat. Two, three, and four. Again, two, three, and four. Once more, two, three, and four. That's the idea. Now, if we turn our attention to line two, bar four, we've got a little third finger flick on the uh, second beat. Let's just give it a try. Um, it's fairly um, straightforward. It's very straightforward, really, uh, by this stage of the series. Line two, bar four, three, four. And again, once more. That's it. Now, uh, if we turn our attention to line three, Bar one is as above, except just a bit of variety. We don't include the first ornament. So there's no ornament on beat three. If you compare it to the, the line above, you'll see. And then, so that we'll take that as a given. If we look at line three, bar four, we've got this little uh, flick, elaborate flick on beat three, have a listen. Oh, no, not like that. Scrub that from your oral memory. That's better. <laughs> Maybe if I hadn't said anything, you wouldn't have noticed because these um, ornaments are meant to be so easy. Somebody, uh, a well-known fiddler, uh, once said to me in a, in a workshop, the, the ornaments are so textural that you, if, if you forget to play it, 
you, you might not be sure whether you played it or not. Um, here we go. Line three, bar four. It's the last bar of the strut spade. Three and four. Let's just slow it down, have a listen, and then we'll play. It's tricky to slow down. Give me another chance. Here we go, and four. And again. Last time. There we go. So you got on with that. Right. That's the Strath Spey. Um, the only other point, a general point, is when you have so many snaps, do try and, and start them in the upper half, only because it's a short down and a, a big up. So you need, you need the space, the length of the bow, just to fit it all in. Uh, right. Let's turn to the real Lord John Campbell by Duncan McIntyre, F major. You might... Uh, know of the Strathspe, Lord John Campbell, it's in D major. Uh, we played it at the Strathspe in Rio uh, recently. Um, but um, while it's uh, similar, there's clearly a relationship between the tunes. It, it's quite different in this form, which we'll take uh, on, Gau uh, on Glenn's authority as being the original. Uh, here we go, Lord John Campbell. Let's give the first line a read. Two, three, four. things. We've got the burls um, on uh, bars three and four. If they distract you, just make them crotchets. We've got the uh, third finger flick of an ornament in bar three. Uh, it's just a F A F. And the other thing I'd say were the um, leaps, the large intervals between a few notes. So in bar two, between notes five and six, we've got a whole octave. So we've got the high G, second finger on the E, down to a low G, a third finger on the D. So you're leapfrogging the A string there. And it's the same when you do the repeat. So the last note of the line is a high F, first finger on the E, and the first note when you go back and do the repeat, and when you go on, is a low F. The best thing is to try and get some, some uh, spring, some propulsion from the high note. So if you come off the string a little, uh, let's, let me just demonstrate in bar two. If you come off the string just a little, you can get that silent shift. Let's just try that. Lord John Campbell, bar two, with a bit of a lift to, to affect the, the large interval between those five and six. Three, four. And again. Once more, and. That's that. And then if we go from bar four back to bar one, It's a bit easier because you're already on the up for the high note, come off the string, and then land down. So, ya da 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 Let's give that a try. Bar four, repeating to bar one. Three, four. Let's give the first measure a, a, another play, and then we'll look at the second measure. The four. Okay, 
slightly slower from line two. We're in set 107. We're looking at the second tune, Lord John Campbell by Duncan McIntyre. And we're going to play from line two, under tempo. Ready, two, three, and four. <laughs> So again, we've got these large intervals, particularly in line three, bar three, between those first two notes. In line three, bar three, you want that first note, the quaver F, to be very short, and then you can just pivot the bow. And if you make it quite staccato, it's, it feels different when it's up to tempo. Uh, Uh, that can help too, um, just that bar. Um, let's try, because of course, we've got the large interval in line three, bar three, but also in uh, line three, bar four, we've got an even larger interval. We're going from a low C, which is note two of the bar, to a high G, um, the third note, of bar four. Um, so let's just try from the start of line three. Lord John Campbell, line three. One, two, three, four. <laughs> the reel a playthrough and then we'll get the setter on. Okay, Lord John Campbell from the top. One, two, three, four. <laughs> some pairing of notes that's going on so rather than feeling it in two you sometimes feel it in four um, particularly um, line two bar three um, on beats three and four yep pump 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 and it's the same in uh, line three bar three ya da di da 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 you just want to feel the crotchets there rather than just the notes uh, okay Remember any thoughts or questions, fire them into the chat bar. In the meantime, though, let's play set 107, the Struts Bay, Mrs. Oswald of Ockham Crew's new Struts Bay, and the real Lord John Campbell. Steady tempo. Yum, dum, drum, bar, yum, drum. One, two, three, and four. <laughs> Splendid stuff. F major. Intriguing. Quicker. 
One, two, three, and four. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's at 107. Ins inspirational stuff from the 18th century. Uh, Morris commented in the Strathspey, uh, would you ever play the four snaps in a row different the second time through? Um, just make it part of the interpretation. Uh, yes. Absolutely good. Um, in this series, um, I've taken the deliberate stance of being fairly fixed to the text, but there's a whole different discussion to be had about how we certainly could perform them. And I think the place of variation and uh, and change on the repeat is a fertile topic. And I think, regardless of what any historical treaties might advise, the onus is really on the individual performer. It's a chance to, um, to contribute some additional creativity. Um, some things might be... Um, fairly natural or intuitive, but at the same time, you often find fiddlers, you know, deliberately sitting down and working out how they can make changes. Having said that, I think, and I hope you'll agree, um, that being uh, led by the, the fixed text in the first instance remains uh, a rewarding pursuit. The issue of elaboration and variation is um, perhaps the next step. <laughs> I've been looking for a, an idea to follow this one. Um, so maybe that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Mara. Uh, the Boeing. Yeah, the Boeing, it's just wild. Bow control, that's what it's all about. Get to the heel at least a couple of times each measure and back to the tip. Right, uh, keep thoughts and questions coming. I'll try and be more concise. Uh, <laughs> set 111, it's another F major set. Uh, Lord Elphinstone's The Strathspey. It's not marked on the uh, music, but it's also by Duncan McIntyre, the composer of our previous reel. And um, the reel in uh, 111 is Mrs. James Campbell by our old friend, Malcolm McDonald, who played a fair few of his tunes to date. Um, right. Let's just give the first measure of Lord Elphinstone a play. The measure is not uh, repeated, it's written out, so it's the first two lines. Um, and let's keep the rhythm to equal quavers. There, there aren't a great deal of ornaments, so um, we won't worry about those. Um, something like one, two, three, and four.
No, um, when I'm writing out these tunes, I always try and cross-reference them with uh, lots of sources. And um, there's a chap who's kindly transcribed all of these tunes for the second book into ABC notation. And, and in his notes for Lord Elphinstone, he says, this high A at the beginning is, is correct <laughs> because it seems uh, rather out there, but it's, it's all about, for the fiddlers, the bowing. You need to take this on the up, but at the heel. <coughs> Let's just try that, the first two notes. Up B, down B, high A, low F. At the, in the lower half, certainly almost at the heel. Ready to just those two notes, three and four. And again, once more. There we go. And it comes a few times. So there's the original upbeat. There's the upbeat to bar three. And then the upbeat to line two. It's different in line two bar three, the upbeat to bar three, because we're staying high. And there, you want to make it very legato and connected um, in comparison to what is inevitably very detached otherwise. Okay, let's give it another uh, another run. Still equal quavers, we'll add the, the rhythm in shortly. One, two, three, four. really inventive and it's it's this idea that's really at the the crux of the whole piece the inspiration for the piece is this yum pum um now when we come to adding the rhythm it's a real um mix of um, dotted quavers equal quavers and snapped quavers so just have your wits about you um here we go with the rhythm one two three and four <laughs> Just give that another run straight away. One, two, three, and four. It's interesting that their part does simply repeat the first four bars of the melody with a different second ending. I think in the original Mara, it's um, first time and second time bar. That explains that. If it was Gao, he probably would have deliberately written it out with um, an alternative. Um, but um, to, to save space or whatever in the, in the original publication. Uh, first and second time bar. Right. Um, let's just do that once more because it's not as straightforward. It's not predictable. Here we go. One, two, three, and four. <laughs> It's an heroic F major Strathspey. If you remember back to uh, earlier in the series, we played an F major Strathspey. It was called John Roy Stewart. Um, and until you um, embody this heroic character, 
the tune just doesn't come to life. So you need to have that sort of broad shouldered stance and almost sort of militaristic uh, march. Yum, pati, da, da, ti, and particularly pointed in the rhythm. So when you've got these dotted rhythms, yum, ta dum, tum, tum, ta dum, tum. The semiquaver is as the upbeat to the next beat. Yum, ta dum, tum. If you just look at this rhythm at the very start, yum, tum, ta dum, tum, ti, tum, ta dum, ta dum, ta ti, ta dum. Very pointed. That's the point that I'm trying to make here. Right, once more. One, two, three, and four. Despite those equal quavers at the end there, uh, at the end of the, the, the second line. So that's the first measure. Let's take a look at line three, where we have the second measure. And let's go back to a slower tempo and equal quavers, something like... And you'll notice that we've still got that high, that large interval except it's moved from being the upbeat to being on the beat. So, ya da da tum And it means that the bowing is now upside down because we've been taking the, in the first measure, we take the high note on the up and then we can get the down. But here, it's really just a case of making it very detached. ya da dum ta dum So there's some daylight between the first two notes in a... Line three bar one. Let's just try equal quavers. One, two, three, and four. All about the voicing. Yeah, da dum up here. Dum, da da dee dum. Yeah, da dum. Yeah, da 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 dee da da. Yeah, da dum. And then it stays up in bar three. Yeah, da 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 dum da dum. And then it goes yum da dee dum da dum da dum. So we go from having sort of distinct voices to then a sort of transition between the two. Let's just try it again. Line three of Lord Elphinstone. In case anyone with a, an Aberdeen connection is wondering, uh, it's not a northeast connection, it's Elphinstone in, Elphinston in Stirlingshire. Here we go. Line three, equal quavers, two, three, and four. <laughs> in the ornaments. We've got one at the end of line three. Let's look at that one first. Have a listen. I'll play it more slowly then we can try it together. Ready? Line three, bar four. One, two, three, and four. And again. Once more, and. And then if we look to line four, bar three, have a listen. Let's try that. Line four, bar three. 
three, and four. One more time, and. Just keep the emphasis on the first note of the horn. Once more, and. There we go. Okay. Right. Here comes the challenge. The rhythm. Let's keep it really steady and add in the rhythm. Uh, something like... I'll try not to speed it up. Sorry. One, two, three, and four. Let's just try that whole thing again. Lord Elphinstone, line three. One, two, three, and four. might suit it whenever we have this two note pickup. So uh, if we look at the start of line three, we've got these two semi quavers as the pickup. It might suit the uh, piece to make those very short. So if you look at the uh, line three bar one, and at the end of it, we've got these two semi quavers. But in effect, let's try playing it as if the previous quaver, so that's line three, bar one, beat four. If that quaver was in fact dotted, instead of trying to explain it, I'll just play it and uh, see what you think. Two, three, four. It's a subtlety, but it's quite marked in terms of the, the heroic character. So let's just try that with um, the like demi semis um, when the pickup comes. Ready, two, three, four. up to you. Um, it loses some of its measure, but it gains some of its heroism, I don't know. Uh, I see Donald saying, very nice of the composer to have large jumps after a dotted quaver to allow you time to find the next note on my box. <laughs> yes, uh, it's the same on the fiddle. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a, bit of a relief. <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, right, I think that's it for the Strathspey. Let's move on to the real Mrs. James Campbell. This is an interesting one. It's um, idiosyncratic, like all these tunes are, but this one it just doesn't always go where you expect. So let's try it nice and steady. Set 111, the real Mrs. James Campbell. Ready, two, three, and four.
Now, um, as a general rule, there are two chords per bar. Now, fiddles, you probably don't even pay any attention to the chords because they, they don't have a direct bearing on, on playing the tune. However, on occasion, there are more than two chords in a bar, for instance, in uh, bar two of this reel. And it, it can be an indication of where you want to pair the quavers and emphasize a crotch at beat rather than have just the minute four quavers to a beat. Um, so for instance, um, line uh, bar two, those first four quavers to be paired, yada dee da da ba da da dee. And then from line three, uh, from bar three into bar four, yada da da dee da 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 dee da 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 da. Let's just try it once more. And um, if you want to try pairing those quavers at the start of bar two and then from the second half of bar three into bar four, see how you go on. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Just a wee word about this opening because I just find myself tripping over it quite a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, di, yeah, da, di. To go down and then back up and then down again. It's just a bit noodly. Um, so just um, just watch it. Maybe circle it. Um, that's just in the first bar there. Let's give it one more play and then we'll look at the second measure. This is James Campbell from the top. One, two, three, four. There we go. Um, right, second line. Slow again, two, three, four. Uh, there's not too much to say. It plays itself. In the last line, in the last bar of each line, you can pair those quavers. Um, it, it's not so essential in line three, bar three, where you've got those two chords marked in the second half of the bar. Uh, but let's just give it another play from line two. One, two, three, and four. <laughs> Give the set a play. This is set 111. The Strathspey, Lord Elphinstone, and the real Mrs. James Campbell at a steady tempo. One, two, three, and four.
What do you think then? Uh, faster? Sure. One, two, three, and four. <laughs> for this video. Thanks for taking part. We meet next on Thursday when we'll continue our exploration of the Glen Collection. More flats, uh, B-flat, and we reach our lowest uh, point on the circle of fifths, uh, three flats. Uh, great tunes, though. Don't let it put you off. <laughs> In the meantime, take care and keep playing.